Beloved, this weekend, as we celebrate the third week in Pentecost season, one of the readings from the lectionary is the well-known psalm, one of the psalms from the sons of Korah, Psalm 42, as the deer pants for the water brooks. We're going to look at that in just a minute. But let me just say something about the sons of Korah. If you remember Korah's rebellion in the wilderness, Moses um, was instructed by God to create a dividing line and, and the earth swallowed up Korah and all those that rebelled with him. What kind of a heritage does that leave for your children and your children's children? It's quite a memory to be left in your family line that you rebelled against God. Well, ironically, when the sons of Korah, who are appointed to work with the Levites in the setting up of the tabernacle and even in the land with David and David's tabernacle, they write a number of the Psalms, and I have discovered in my journey that any of those seasons when I'm going through something difficult, the sons of Korah give us the wisdom to know how to overcome our inner resistance, our rebellion, our revolts, our pushing back. And even those times, as in this psalm, when God is seemingly absent. We long for his presence, and yet there are seasons where his absence, or his seeming absence would be more accurate, teaches us how to once again appreciate and hunger for his presence. And so here in the New King James, listen carefully, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they continually say to me, Where is your God? Now the they are the enemies of our soul. The reality of the powers of darkness being present to harass and to hinder and annoy is not a new thing. Since the fall, the powers of darkness have hindered and harassed and annoyed and accused the people of God. And the veiled accusation that's laid out is, where is your God? In other words, if God were really loving you, why would he allow you to go through a season of absence? And maybe you lost some ground. Maybe you've lost footage. Maybe you messed up. And all of us can find ourselves in seasons where our soul is thirsting for God but can't seem to find the living God, the sense of life, the things that we know are part of what our inheritance is in communion with the Father and the Son by the power of the Spirit. And the sons of Korah tell us that their tears have been their food day and night, which means that this is a season of despair. It could even be a season of grief or even a season of depression and in those seasons the enemy never plays fair the enemy always comes to us when we're down in order to reinforce the feeling and the sense of absence and the psalmist goes on to say when I remember these things I pour out my soul within me For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept the the pilgrim feast. I was a praiser. I I was presence-driven. We might use that term today. I was presence-driven. And yet now he begins to talk to himself. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? There are seasons where we go through things internally where we don't have the answers. And people that are ready to give you pat answers for why you're despairing or why you're depressed, or why you're in grief. You you want to just learn to silence their ability to further cause you pain. Because there are just seasons where we don't have answers. And when we are in those seasons, we go through a sense of great disquiet. We can wrestle with anxiety when we're disquieted. We can wrestle with massive senses of loss and uncertainty and yet he doesn't stay there while he is asking himself in a soul searching way why are you cast down on my soul why why, why are you disquieted within me he then affirms hope in God for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance in other words I may not be in a season I'm enjoying right now, but it's not going to last. You've heard me say this before. This is a season, not a life sentence. 
and I'm going to get past this, and I will praise him again for the help of his countenance, his face. The difference between you and a beast of the field is that you're a biped. You stand up erect, and Christ, who is the glory and the lift of your head, put your eyes at the top of your head so you could look up and so that you could behold his face. He is the help of your countenance because his face, his countenance, causes our faces to be radiant. And so the sense of God's absence is the sense of not being able to see his face in the midst of warfare, in the midst of grief, in the midst of despair, all of it happening now. And then when he goes from stirring his own heart and saying, why, 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 he then brings that to speech before God. Walter Brueggemann invites us to realize that prayer brings everything to speech. So does Eugene Peterson. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. He's bringing it to speech now. Therefore, I will remember you. Bob Mumford years ago said, fix your rememberer when you go through seasons like this. I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, the highest mountain peak in the mountains of Zion, from, from the hill Mazar, the Golan Heights, Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. Just imagine standing at the height of the Golan Heights with David and seeing the cascading waterfalls coming down from the peaks of Mount Hermon and all the other mountains and coming down to rocky tablelands where there are pools and then cascading down more into other pools at lower levels until they empty into what becomes the Jordan River. Deep calls to deep at the, at the noise of your waterfall. So in other words, this rushing water that's cascading down, that lands in these pools, it's like there's this resonating echoing and calling of an antiphonal call and response back and forth. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. Now that's quite reminiscent of Jonah in the belly of the whale being taken into the depths of the sea and taken all the way down to Sheol, he says. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. Now his speech is moving into an affirmative awareness of the God who commands his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. So listen carefully. Even in the midst of our darkness, God commands his loving kindness in the daytime and he sings to us at night. And let's say he wants to sing through us. In the midst of the congregation, Jesus said, I will sing thy praise. God is calling to God from within us. The deep of God, the depths of God by the Spirit are being searched by the Father and the Spirit and in us. And, and those depths are calling up to the depths of God in the heavens. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and the night. His song shall be with me a prayer to the God of my life. I will say to God my rock. Now he's remembering being in the tableland where the limpid pools are and the cascading waterfalls. And he's standing on a rock. I will say to God my rock, why have you forgotten me? He's not afraid to bring the speech. God, it feels like you just have just, you took a bus and you left me at the bus station. Why do I go mourning all day long because of the oppression of the enemy? The good news here is that he knows he's mourning, but he also knows this is enemy oppression. He knows where the issue is. But now he begins to describe in metaphor what this oppression feels like. As with the breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me. Veiled accusations can feel like spiritual bones being broken while they say to me all day long, where is your God? This is a relentless, ongoing, nagging, veiled sense of accusation. Where's your God? If God was so good, why are you going through this? Maybe you lost ground. Maybe you can't get it back. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Why are you cast down, oh my soul? He comes back to the original self-talk. Why are you cast down, oh my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance, my God. Now listen carefully as I close. Years ago, my wife and I lived in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and our backyard overlooked the Canadian Rockies, Mount Rundelen, or it's called the Three Sisters, in Banff Lake Louise. We were 45 minutes from Banff Lake Louise. And we took a trip 
often to Banff Lake Louise just to be in the wilderness. And uh, we hiked up Johnston's Canyon, which is very much similar in my estimation to this picture that David remembers on the Golan Heights. And as you hike up Johnston's Canyon, you come to these rocky tablelands where there are pools, deep lime pools, that you want to jump in. They're clear, crystal clear, but they're freezing water. But, I mean, just beautiful. And the wildlife is, is all around, and some of them are taking drinks. And then you walk up further, and there's another pool, and these cascading waterfalls. And you go all the way up to the top to where the water starts, and it's this rocky table end where there's just this trickle of water that becomes this cascading, torrential pouring down of waterfalls that ends up in pools and then goes down further all the way down to the Jordan River in the Golan Heights but all the way down the canyon into Lake Louise in Canada and as we stood by one of those pools I I was overwhelmed by the 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 stillness of the pool and the rushing of the waters that came from above it as the deer pants for the water brooks I remember years ago reminding myself of this when we were at Johnson's Canyon and I had read um, some commentaries and one of the commentators and the scholars said that when a deer is chased by a predator in the forest or in the wilderness they give off a scent the scent of fear is given off and it enables them to be tracked by predatory animals and the only way to lose that scent of fear and throw the predator off track is that the deer begins to lift up its nose and pick up the scent of water and runs in the direction of the water because the deer knows instinctively, if I get in the water, my scent will be lost to my predator and I will be able to take a drink and relax and I will also be safe. We're all panting for the water brooks and we all need to, as Bob Mumford said, fix our rememberer and realize that the river of God is flowing even when we seemingly feel absent from him or we think he's absent from us. And yet he's commanding his loving kindness in the daytime and he is singing to us in the night seasons. And we want to keep telling ourselves, hope in God, I will yet praise him. And so wherever you are at this moment, whatever you're going through, he's there, he's with you, he will never fail you or forsake you. And it's normal to have seasons of seeming absence, knowing it's a season and not a sentence. It won't last forever. This too shall pass. Beloved, on Sunday, we're going to continue to look at Jesus sees as we talk about the move of God. Jesus sees. Jesus is moved by what he sees and he operates based on what he sees the Father doing to set captives free and to heal the brokenhearted, etc., etc. Bring somebody with you. I believe we're in a healing season. I believe we're in a therapeutic season where Jesus, the physician of the soul, wants to heal us from the inside out in greater ways than we have ever realized. Come expecting. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday.